Okay, so now in this part, let's dive into a little bit deeper into selections, a couple of layers, maybe add some text and go into colors a little bit as well. So the first thing I want to do is I want to save my project. So we added a couple of layers and we've done some work. So let's make sure we don't lose our files. So I just go to file and I go to file save as and you notice here that I already saved this as a PSD. Now you might ask why do we save this as a Photoshop file? Now the reason why is because if you save this as a JPEG or a PNG that you can then go and upload to Facebook and so on. If you do that, then it will compress all of our layers. And if we open it up again as a JPEG or a PNG, we're not going to have our layers to go back to and carry on with our work. Whereas if you save it as a Photoshop file, it will keep all of our layers. So we can always come back and edit them later on. Okay, so I'll just save it and it will ask me if I want to replace that and I do. And once you hit save, it will also come up with this little window and just hit OK. So now because we saved it in that folder that we already set up in our bridge, you'll notice that it's here straight away with a preview of what it looks like in that current save. So the first thing, let's go ahead and add a little sort of banner or a top sort of banner that we can add text later on easier. So I'm going to select my rectangular marquee tool, make a selection on top of how big I want it to be. And you'll notice that we're still on this layer here. And what we want to do, we want to keep this as a separate object as well by adding it to a new layer. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a new layer by clicking on this icon here. So once I hit that, you'll notice that I'll have a new layer appear here. And the easiest way to visualize what layers are is basically you can visualize them as transparent pieces of glass that will sit on top of your image. So now if I go ahead and paint this, so I'll just select my brush tool with B and I'll just give it a color. So we can always give it a color here with the foreground color. If I hit there, you will see that the color pick a foreground color appears and I can select a color here. And if I drag my mouse off onto the image, you'll notice that I'll have my color picker and I can select colors of my image. And I can also use swatches here if there is a specific color that I want. Okay, so let's say I want this to be a, I don't even know. Let's go with a dark blue color. Okay, and I'm going to click and drag and I'll paint this area in like so. And you don't have to worry about going outside of our selection because it's not going to paint there anyway. So now if I deselect this by hitting Ctrl D, you'll notice that because this is on a different layer, I can always turn this off and I can also paint extra stuff here and I can turn it off so it doesn't affect our image at all. And that's the reason why we should use layers. Now what you will also notice that this is sitting on top of our adjustment layer. Now what happens if I drag this underneath the adjustment layer? You'll notice that it turns black and white straight away. And the reason why that is, is because this adjustment layer here is affecting everything that's underneath. Okay, so if I drag this back on the top, because it's sitting on the top of this adjustment layer, this adjustment layer will only affect our original image. All right. So let's go ahead and add some text. So I'm going to use my text tool here. Okay, and we got horizontal, type tool, vertical, and so on. I'm just going to use the standard horizontal. And you can also access the type tool by pressing T on your keyboard as well. Now you'll notice here that on the top, as soon as we select our text tool, we can select different fonts. Okay, so I'll just select that one. We can select different types, so it can be italic as well, the size what sort of style it is, so sharp, crisp, strong, and so on. You can change the formatting and the color as well. So let's just add some text first of all. So I'll just click here, and you'll notice that we have a new layer appear straight away where we can add text. So I'm just gonna type in here, flower. Now you notice that um, there is our text. Well, basically, it will add the default color, color to be your foreground color that was selected already. So you can see that up here. Now, if I want to change that, I'm just gonna select my whole text and then click this. 
And you'll notice that now I can modify my color, but it's not really, or it is applying to my text, okay? So I'm just gonna change that to black. And now I'm gonna move it as well because it's not really where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna use my move tool and I'll just click and drag it over. Okay, so there, there we go, there's my flower. And I know it's not very, it's not a very pretty image, but we are just exploring. So I'm just gonna move it to the center here. So again, we can change the color of this now if we select this layer again. So by double clicking, and I can always go back to this color and I can give it a different color if I wish and it will update straight away. Okay. So let's go ahead and add another area here as well. So I'm going to use my rectangular marquee tool again, drag a section out here. Okay. And now instead of using a brush tool, I want to use my paint bucket tool, which will basically fill in this whole selection. Now what we need to be careful with now is you notice that it's, we have this layer selected. So if I just give this a foreground color, let's say this dark color and I apply it, you'll notice that it will only apply it to that selection, but it's not applying it to that black area because it's a different area. Okay. So I need to click that separately as well. Now, if this was a new layer, however, so if I had a new layer and I add it in now, now because basically this new layer was completely empty and we had our selection, it will fill in that whole selection and it's a good idea to keep this separate as well. So now that it's separate, I'll just also add a new text. Okay, so I'm gonna name this to be by our meal. And again, I'll select it and give it a different color. So let's make this one white. And I know that our font selection is not very good either. Now, let's say I want to change the size. So I'm just gonna select that again. And here, I can either change the size by giving it a specific font size, like so. Or if I go to the T, this little T icon and hold down my left mouse button and click and drag, I can always change it interactively as well. Okay. So now that it's all good, I'll just use my move tool and move it into the center. And I really don't like this font, so let's just go ahead and change it by double clicking and make sure that it's all selected. And then let's go ahead and find a different font that looks a little bit nicer. So you can also download extra fonts that I will show you in an extra tutorial in just a different part. But for now, let's just pick something that's fairly decent and we'll go with our image. So I'll probably just, well, that's not very nice either. I'm not very good at picking fonts. So I'll just pick something that's half decent. Okay, that will do. So I'll just use that font for now. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next part.